Hey, what's up, guys? So I wanted to address some questions regarding the future of my channel and my content. Honestly, in the last 18 months, I haven't really been active as I wanted to be. And I've, I've gotten a lot of emails and comments asking me what the future of my channel is going to be, especially for next year and if I quit YouTube. And seeing my lack of consistency, those are very valid questions. We're going into new year and there's some massive changes coming my way. So I do have some big announcements to make, but before we can move on to the future, I wanna address the past and really what I've been up to for the last 18 months. So in early 2021, I basically uh, got some great freelance uh, offers my way and I was doing quite a bit of hard surface modeling. I uh, also got a chance to push myself and do some character art, which is something that uh, I still basically want to improve upon. And my focus until that point was mainly hard surface. So it was actually a very good experience, but all that pretty much was still in the realm of 3D art. And doing YouTube for quite a bit, something that I started to understand the value of is being able to communicate uh, with a lot of artists, uh, especially with this medium that we call YouTube. So I was always intrigued on how I could communicate and grow outside of being a 3D artist and outside of YouTube. Coming out of the pandemic, I basically found myself that I was getting somewhat in a comfort zone. As I started posting more YouTube content, in pretty much a narrow category of not only Maya, which is one software, and then we condensed that down into hard surface modeling, I felt like I was becoming the Maya hard surface guy. Maybe that's not the title or what you guys thought when you came across my channel, but that's how I started feeling. And for every subscriber, for every view, and for every thumbnail, I almost felt like those thumbnails were basically closing in on me and they started to put me in this box. And anytime that I feel that I'm stuck in a box, I start to look at those corners of that box, start to analyze it and start to look for a structural weakness so I could burst right through it. And even before I jumped on YouTube, I was a little hesitant to be honest because you know, not only do I do um, content, in 3D modeling content, but I also put myself in front of the camera, put my face, my voice, and my thoughts. And when you're putting yourself out in front of so many people, it can be a scary thing initially. But I pretty much got over that after a while, like I think a lot of creators on YouTube do. And I started seeing the power of basically pushing outside of that comfort zone. And I really saw the value in doing this and the growth that it can have. I was able to get outside of this YouTube box that I've been in and grow in other areas. And I did get some wins outside of YouTube. And the reason that I'm gonna share a little bit about these wins is not to talk about myself, but to help artists and creatives really in any niche, especially digital artists, because I think there's somewhat of a more narrow focus on a specific discipline, especially when you get to the nuances of digital art and working within a uh, more elaborate production environment. There is value in realizing this pretty strong principle that I started to realize once I started expanding my reach of just being a very narrow-minded production artist. I think many artists and creatives often sell themselves short. They put themselves in this narrow box of the specialty of their field and they stay there both professionally and mentally without much growth. Just like I did for a very, very long time because my brain and my mental blocks told me that's all I ever would be. You're this hard surface artist or you're just going to be a 3D artist, but something powerful as I grew started to happen. See that title 
that we often put ourselves into is a form of comfort. But comfort is a very dangerous place for those who seek growth. We often refer to ourselves as just a hard surface modeler, a graphic designer, the Photoshop guy, the wedding photographer, or the Adobe Premiere video editor. Your greatest asset as a creative is not the way you put polygons together to create a 3D asset or the way that you arrange pixels to create a piece of beautiful art. It's not even the brush strokes that you use to lay down acrylic on a canvas or the beauty of your subjects as a photographer. Your greatest asset as an artist is your creativity. And once you understand this, you become exponentially more powerful and the world and its opportunities open up just like many opportunities that I'm about to share open up for me. So one of the methods that I wanted to grow as a communicator is actually do public speaking. And in October of 2021, I actually got my chance and I got to speak at a conference called Money Grows on Trees in Turks and Caicos. And I basically shared my experiences as a content creator, as an influencer, as an artist, and also as an entrepreneur. And in my speech, I basically laid out the groundwork on how I was able to transition from a full-time job to being a full-time creator and sharing my passion of teaching digital art for others and make a living doing it. And honestly, public speaking was somewhat of a challenge, but it was something that I always wanted to do. And I knew that I had to get past that discomfort of getting in front of a lot of people and being to articulate my ideas clearly. And something that initially I didn't realize is that there is no control Z when you have 40, 50 people in front of you and you have to do basically one talk and keep their attention and you really don't have an undo button, right? So as digital artists, we always got that nifty control Z option. You don't have that. So even though I was pretty good at communicating via YouTube and I got a lot of practice and a lot of reps in doing that, I was pretty comfortable at that point speaking in front of the camera. When you step outside and you remove that camera and the ability to edit a video, it's a whole different ball game. And that being my first public speaking engagement, that took quite a bit of time for me to basically get my act together and uh, present a great presentation. So I put a lot of work in. I basically uh, overcame a lot of mental roadblocks. And I think for my first presentation, it, it went extremely well. And I earned the confidence through going through that uncomfortable experience and earning confidence is something that is uh, pretty uh, extraordinary if, if you kind of think about the process of earning confidence because everybody wants to have confidence in something, but you have to earn that level of mentality because you only get confidence by accomplishing something that's outside of your comfort zone. So I got confident in public speaking and I look forward to doing that again. The other opportunity that came my way more recently uh, as of uh, October of 2022, uh, I got two of my software reviews published in PC Magazine. Up until that point, I never had a review published on such a prestigious magazine or article, uh, even though I have been doing uh, pretty much writing emails and scripting out some of my YouTube videos. Uh, that's a whole different ball game when you have to structure a well thought out article to go on a major publication. So that was a little bit of me again, breaking through and expanding my forms of communication, getting past my comfort zone. And as of recently, I'm now a published author on PC magazine. Uh, and like I said, I created two articles. Uh, one of them is a Houdini review. I'll put the link down in the description uh, below. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, I would appreciate it if you guys go on there and actually drop a little comment on that article and give me your feedback on it. But that was another experience where I definitely grew uh, and my creativity kind of funneled into another area of expertise. And these are some of the opportunities that are available to you 
as a artist and creative, if you know how to channel that creativity, which is your greatest asset, you'll be able to pivot from one thing to the other, but you have to get outside of your comfort zone. If you're always behind a Photoshop document, we're always behind a Maya scene. Uh, sometimes it can be scary to put yourself out there. Not only your artwork, that is an extension of you, but even taking that further and start to break down your process. And it can start with 3D art like it did with me, but you could see that you could keep pushing that even further into honestly areas that you might have never thought imaginable. For example, I, before started doing YouTube, I never thought that, you know, I would have opportunities to do uh, sponsored content for a company like Autodesk or have a article published by PC Magazine or be in front of, you know, 40, 50, 60 people talking about my experiences as a content creator. If you would have asked me that, you know, three years ago, I thought you'd be probably joking. But a lot of times it's those sacrifices that we do, not knowing how it's all gonna pan out, just basically pushing and trying to grow as a creative more so than just a very uh, type of artist in a very narrow niche. And like I said, for me, I was a hard surface modeler. And you know, that's kind of what I did professionally, artistically. And for a long time, that's something that I just did with my content. And by basically growing outside of that, I was able to have growth in a lot of areas in life. And that is the price of growth. So while I was able to grow outside of all these areas outside of YouTube, there's also the opportunity cost. So as much as I love doing YouTube content, um, I basically had to take my focus and put it into these uh, new areas of growth. And I had to go through that uncomfortable period. And anytime that you do a new endeavor, like public speaking or article writing, you know, people actually do this as a career and it could take a lot of years to get proficient at it. And uh, a lot of times we have to put exponentially more work to come up with adequate results. We all know that as a creative, it always takes 10 times longer to go th through something for the very first time. So there was a lot of effort into uh, putting a quality result. I always try to put a good quality product uh, in front of the world. And you know, may maybe that's one of my downfalls too, that um, I do try to perfect things. And that kind of also has led to me creating content at a little bit more slower pace than other creators. And you know, that's something that I often, you know, thought about. So even though life and opportunities have taken me away from YouTube, I haven't stopped thinking about you guys and all the support and love that you've given me. And I'm forever appreciative of not only the comments and the shares on my videos, but also the emails of you guys just opening up um, with your 3D journeys uh, and your struggles and also the support and just to check just to check in on me and you know honestly that means a lot to me uh, i know that you might feel like creators is kind of a one-way uh platform or youtube in general where the creator just gives value and you guys are just viewers but i don't see you guys like that i see you guys like an extended part of my family because honestly a lot of times that i'm doing uh content or that I'm kind of not feeling it or have been burnt out in the past is those emails that I get from you guys thanking me or telling me a win that you know you got from one of my videos and that has kept me going and kept me pushing to create more content because you know the YouTube grind can be exhausting you especially for I could speak for 3D artists creating 3D art is pretty um much demanding as far as, you, as far as your artistic bandwidth, but also creating YouTube content can be uh, take quite a bit up of creative uh, bandwidth as well. If things look a little different from the previous uh, frame is that the camera decided to stop recording all of a sudden, 
right before I'm wrapping up the video. That's one of the many joys of being a YouTube content creator. You're probably wondering at this point, JL, what's the deal? Are you coming back to YouTube? Are you still gonna be doing 3DR tutorials? The truth is that on the surface, it might have appeared like I pretty much vanished and I was no longer interested in making content for you guys, but I actually been working on a big, big project. And this project is gonna help a lot more artists make that transition from student to working professionals by really simplifying the process of creating professional 3D art and making it much quicker to get those results and get your foot in the industry. Along with this project, I'm kicking off an event along with some new branding that I will be revealing very soon. For a while, I had everything under my name, which was fine. That's kind of how I started YouTube. But this new branding will better represent the greatness of 3D artists everywhere. To answer the question, I'm definitely coming back full strength in 2023 with much more content. And by the end of this week, I will be dropping a trailer with much more details on that big project that I've been working on. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the little notification icon to be notified when that trailer drops this week. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.